our boat for the day. Arrived at the Blue Caves. Cheers. Olive oil from the Guinness Book of World Records. We're Craig and Kirsty, a British couple who planned for years to travel the world before finally quitting our jobs and leaving everything behind on March the 1st, 2020. Much like everyone else that year, we soon realised we weren't going to get very far, so we stayed put for six months in Estonia, where we ended up making front page news in their national newspaper, Urtulet, and even ended up on their national TV show, Ring Vade. After finally making it to a few more European countries, we made the decision to head back to the UK, where we waited patiently to start our travels again. Now we're finally exploring a brand new country. Our first country abroad for almost 10 months. Outside of the UK. So excited. And we are going on a three island boat trip today and we're going to take you with us. Yay, we just had the loveliest Uber driver called Even, not Stephen, as I called him. <laughs> Kirsty said, thanks Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> he was lovely, he gave us so many recommendations, um, gave us some tips of things to do, so we've got some exciting plans. We're going to hire a car this week and drive around to some other places. But for today, we are super excited to hit the water and get out there on a boat. Going to do lots of snorkeling. So we're going to three islands, as I said, including one that doesn't have any cars and another that is in the Guinness World Book of Records. But stay tuned to find out why. Let's go for a swim. <laughs> And after a very short 5-10 minute taxi journey from the main strip in La Pad, here we are at our boat for the day, Regina Maris. We're now on the boat. Actually we're on a smaller boat first of all because we are going to go to the caves first. So this trip includes three islands plus you can add on the caves. It doesn't cost any extra so you may as well do it. Um, so yeah, we're swimming in the blue caves. <laughs> it's a really cool pirate ship behind us. Can you see it just there? Wish we were getting on that. But uh, yeah, our boat's pretty cute and we're excited to go and see some caves. And then we will find our boat, Regina Maris. Oh, the price was 600 kuna for the two of us. We'll put the price uh, in pounds below. It should be exciting. We've arrived at the Blue Caves, time to jump in. Ladies first. No, we're good to go there, Ready? Ready? Go. Okay. Ooh, crash! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Into the dark cave we go. Croatia has a couple of these spectacular blue caves. This one is on the island of Kolodjek, near Dubrovnik. It is also referred to as the Blue Grotto. These caves have formed naturally due to the seawater eroding the limestone. And as you can see, the only way to access this cave is to swim, as the ceiling is super low. The way the light and the sea interact with each other is what creates the beautiful shade of blue. Together with how shallow the water is, the sunlight reflects off the white seabed. Beneath the surface, we were able to see so clearly. Is that really beautiful? Not as scary as I thought it one's much bigger than the other yeah. I'd say probably about five meters water depth sand at the bottom beautiful and the water temperature is surprisingly lovely it's a, it's a nice temperature and we all know I can't handle it if it's cold so I would tell you if it's too cold it's not it's lovely but let's go catch the boat <laughs> The 
Tofiti Islands, or the Elephites, is a small archipelago consisting of 14 islands stretching northwest of Dubrovnik in the Adriatic Sea. So we're back from the caves now and we're just going across from our boat onto the other boat and onto the island of Falatrap. We've got 45 minutes here and then we've got to get back on the boat for lunch. <laughs> Island number one. <laughs> it's very pretty, it's very cute and quaint. Not entirely sure what there is to do here. <laughs> Apparently there's an but island with a lot of olive oil or something. I don't know if that's this one. They didn't give us any information on the That's boat. the one in the Guinness Book of Records. That's not this island. Ah, uh, okay. But, but yeah, they didn't give us any information. They just said, you've got 45 minutes, lunch is back on the boat, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we stepped off and we're like, okay, cool. So we just found a load of steps. We're gonna wander up them. There is a beautiful sandy beach. Yeah. of which there's not lots of in Croatia or not around the Dubrovnik area anyway so it's nice to see a sandy beach yeah. but the weather's a little bit overcast I think saw some lightning offshore so <laughs> it's not really beachy weather but so we're going to explore instead we're heading up some steps there's a nice little shop here when you get off the boat there's a little stand um, with a guy selling some nice little things we're going to go up these steps Ooh. and see if there's a nice viewpoint <laughs> I'm going to stop now before I get really out of breath. Yeah, I stopped talking for that reason. <laughs> we came up these stairs and I mean, it's very pretty up here. There's very pretty views, but I don't know if you can see behind me, there's a big old dog and a sign saying there's a dog there as well. So we're not going to go any further. Um, we're going to go back down the stairs and go a different way. But uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery tour on this island. He's still sat there. There's some rosemary here as well. It smells so nice. Kolachep Island is the smallest of the three inhabited Elefiti Islands, with a population of just under 300 people. There are no cars on the island, making it a great place for relaxation. There's not a huge amount to do here, other than take a leisurely walk along the paths that crisscross the island through the pine forests, or head to one of the island's sandy beaches for some sun or snorkeling. There were also a few restaurants, but as we only had 45 minutes on the island and it wasn't exactly beach weather, we wandered around the streets and found some nice views overlooking the island before making our way back to the boat for lunch. And that is a wrap on island number one. Back to the Regina Maris for island number two. I can smell the lunch back on the boat, which is a good reason to get back on. There's a cute little island, there's a nudist beach, we didn't, didn't go over there. It's quite a nice pleasant temperature just for wandering around. So. Nice. Excited to see what the next island has. Excited to get some food. Island number two. We are now on the island of Shipan. And the sun came out. Yay, it's nice and sunny. So nice. we had a lovely lunch on the boat. It was about an hour's boat journey from island number one. Yeah, and nice there's a few things to see here. So there's a beautiful little harbor. There's about four different churches. And there's gonna be little restaurants and tavernas and things. There's a few cultural sites to see and there's some beaches as well. We've only got one hour here though, so we're gonna to have to get around it quickly. Yeah, most of the time allowance is spent on the final island where we have just under three hours. Yeah. Shipan Island is the largest of the 14 Elefiti Islands and has a population of 410 people. It's possible to hire a bike from the town and cycle around to explore the quaint villages, olive groves, vineyards and lush countryside. As we only had a short amount of time, we made our way on foot in search of some of the island's famous olive oil. Olive oil right, from the Guinness Book of World Records. It smells amazing. It's weird to have olive oil like this, but it's good. I like it. It's really nice. This is literally just like two minutes from the, the port where we just got off the boat. And yeah, this olive oil is amazing. It's like made so fresh and there's more olive oil trees um, per people and square meter than anywhere else in the world here on this little island. So yeah, this is pretty amazing olive oil. That's why it's ended up in the Guinness Book of World Records. 
With all the vineyards on this island, it didn't take us long before we found a quaint family-run local winery. Along with a few others, we decided to get a quick tour and taste the local wines. Arrived at a very rustic wine distillery and there's grappa as well apparently, which I think is probably moonshine. I don't know. We're getting a tour inside. Cheers, really smooth. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Uh, I'm happy. Cheers. Cheers. Jordan. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Delightful. It's really good. So we've had a Merlot and now we're having a... Now we're having a Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> yeah, so we had a Merlot and now we're having a Cabernet Sauvignon. But we're going to buy ourselves a bottle of the Merlot. It's 75 Kuna, which is about 8 pounds, 8 British pounds. Yeah, so yeah, it seems too bad for how nice it is. Yeah, the guys have been so hospitable. They welcomed us in, showed us around, fed us lots of wine. And actually the Merlot was cool, which is unusual for a red wine. And that was really nice. Enjoyed the cool red wine. And that is island number two, off to island number three. And they're literally ushering me back on the boat. I think they might be a bit mad. Please don't be angry with me. Uh, okay. <laughs> We've got two and a half hours here, so hopefully we won't be rushing back to the boat this time. We have arrived at island number three, which is the largest island of the day, and it's called Lopud. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. And it's just started raining. <laughs> yeah, the sunshine left. and it's warming up again the one thing we noticed really loving this island tour our favorite bit so far has been the first bit swimming in the caves um, but every time we get dropped off at an island we just get given a time there's no information about what to do on each island and there's no information when you book this tour so maybe that'd make it a little bit better I mean the last island turned out to be the wine and olive oil island which was great but we only had like less than an hour on there so it's kind of tricky. Um, now we have two and a half hours and we're just trying to figure out what to do. We don't know. It's fun. It's a cute little island. We're having fun. This island is bigger than the last two, so that's why we have longer. But yeah, they don't tell you what to do or why, why you're here for longer and what you can do. So we're just going to figure it out. It's fun just to explore and have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> It turns out that Lepud Island is an oasis of peace and beauty. It's popular because of the numerous sandy beaches. If the beach isn't your thing, then don't worry, because this island also has many olive groves and vineyards, as well as rocky paths through the mysterious old forests, which we took a quick wander around before making our way to the famous Sunj Beach. We're trying to make our way to Sunj Beach, which is on the other side of the island, and if you walk inland on this island from the harbour about five minutes there's a taxi station which 
think it says for 20 krona they'll take you to the other side of the island to Sunge Beach on like a, a big golf buggy. Yeah, 20 kuna per person, one way ticket and 20 kuna back. So hopefully we can get ourselves there. Let's go. On our way to the beach. Definitely worth getting this little taxi thing over from where the boat drops you. We come onto this island. This side looks way more beautiful. We're really glad we did this. We are here, Sunj Beach. Check it out. The sun is even starting to come out. Lovely sandy beach, a beautiful little bay. There's tavernas up here as well, so you can get food and drink. Just get yourself a mojito and chill out, or do like we're gonna do, jump in the sea. Sunj Beach has a peaceful and calm lagoon, with shallow, warm sea stretching miles from green to blue. We didn't have the sunniest of days for this trip, but by the time we arrived at this beach, it was warm enough to relax on the soft sand and enjoy the calmness of the water here, surrounded by the emerald green hills and tucked away from the rest of the world for a few hours. Well, the sun came out for a few minutes at least on Sunj Beach. Time to get on the taxi, back to the boat. Let's go. That's a good way to relax and finish the day up. Now we're going to head back to the mainland, Dubrovnik, and chill. And we are back at the boat. There's a bit of a rush. <laughs> Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the three island tour. Thank you so much for watching. You know what to do. Hit that like button. Please subscribe. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Join us next time as we leave Dubrovnik and head across the borders between Croatia and Bosnia and explore Kirka National Park and all its natural beauty. For daily updates on our travels, head over to our Instagram at TideNotTravelers or for exclusive behind the scenes content, we'd love you to join us on Patreon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. From 2018, yeah. both points. 19 months in the Oak and 13 months in the Fortinage. That's a good year. Yeah. It's a good year. <laughs> Wait. Uh, yeah, he said, so going to cheers my wife, she's just like, no, I'm drinking. Too much wine. Well, yeah, exactly. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> and also, like, no, it's Cabernet. Cabernet. I don't know what it's called. Cabernet Sauvignon. No, that's why. We'll get what you want. That's Sauvignon Blanc. Um, we need to go find some olive oil now, because this is the island with the uh, Guinness... Was it yeah, Guinness World so Book Records? Like. I have half hour consultations, but you know, some things take 45 minutes. Fail. Fail <laughs> central. Do you know the name of the island? I don't know the name of the island just yet. I'll figure that one out. <laughs>